Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food, and up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is, black gold, Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. Yourself. I got some bad news for you. Well, what is it, boy? I hope this ain't gonna break your heart, but I just gotta say it. Well, come on, get it over with. Uncle Jed, I decided I ain't gonna be a brain surgeon. <laughs> I can bear up under that. Uh, after all, we still got Granny. Maybe one doctor in the family is enough. <laughs> I'm sure glad you're taking it so good. Uh, what made you change your mind? I've seen another one of them double knot spy movies. Uncle Jed, that is what I was meant to be. <laughs> not not seven has got the world by the tail. Oh, yeah, I remember you was all fired up over him a while back. Uh, he's one does all that uh, fighting and loving. Does he ever? <laughs> hey, as long as you're working on shoes, would you mind hollering out the heel so I can put a little radio in there? A radio in the heel of your shoe? Yes, sir. That's where double knot seven carries his. Seems like a mighty unhandy place to carry it. Uh, why don't you just carry it in his pocket? Well, I, I can't tell you that. Secret, huh? No, sir, I just ain't sure. <laughs> there you are. You carry yours in your pocket. OK. Hey, but there's something I'm going to need right away, and that's iron for my hat. Iron for your hat? Yes, sir. There was this fellow in the movie that had an iron hat. He kept throwing it, double knot seven. What for? I'm trying to kill him. Why didn't he just shoot him? I can't tell you that neither. <laughs> if anybody goes to skimming iron hats at me, he's going to get one skimmed right back at him. Hey, watch where you're throwing your hat, Jethro. You'd just be glad it wasn't iron. You want to come swimming with me? Shucks, no. I'm going to be a double knot spy. Only time they go swimming is underwater to blow up something. That sounds like fun. I'll be a double knot spy with you. Too dangerous for girls. You'll just wind up getting painted gold. <laughs> Sounds like fun, too. Forget it, Ellie. Girls can't be double knots. Why not? I don't know why not. Heck, fire ain't hardly one myself yet. Well, I can do anything you can do. You can't be a double knot. I can't, too. Can't, neither. Can't. 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 Now, Jethro, you let your cousin Ellie play double knot spy with you. <laughs> Uncle Jed, being a double knot spy ain't play. Heck, fire, that rascal hauls off and saves whole countries. What the did you say? Yes, sir. But this time it was ours. The bad guys was after Fort Knox. And if old Not Not Seven hadn't taken a hand, the next time Uncle Sam needed gold, he'd have been milking a dry cow. <laughs> Ellie, if you're done with your swimming, you can get busy with your chores. Ain't been yet, Granny. Oh, so you finally got back with my beans and my fat back, did you? Doggone it, Granny. I plumb forgot. You give me some more money, I'll fetch it right now. Where's the money I gave you before? Well, on my way down to the store, there was this double knot spy picture playing at the movie theater. So I went in. You and... mean to say that you spent my vittles money on a movie? Well, I spent some of the money on vittles. Four boxes of popcorn, half a dozen candy bars, and a couple of giant orange drinks. <laughs> Are you gonna hickory switch him or am I? Uh, ain't nobody gonna hickory switch me. What did you say? Some of my spies don't get switched. They get pretty near cut in two by death rays. 
handcuffed to atom bombs, have iron hats thrown at them, they wouldn't hold still for switching. Uh-uh, no. <laughs> well, how about paddling? Randy, I reckon Jeff threw his mite right up. The boy's had a big day. He thinks he's come upon his life's calling. Life's calling? <laughs> well, yes, ma'am, Granny. I'm gonna be a double knot spy. Well, congratulations, Mr. Double Knot Spy. Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now, you just cut mud down to that store and spy me up a sack of beans and a slab of fat man. <laughs> <laughs> and you do it in a double knot hurry. <laughs> Hey, boy, you'll be needing some money. Doggone it, Uncle Jed. I bet you old Double Knot Seven wouldn't let nobody swat him on the seat of his britches and send him running for beans and fat back. Well, old Double Knot Seven ain't never run into Granny. <laughs> oh. Come in, Mr. Cushing. Mr. Drysdale is expecting you. Thank you, Miss Hathaway. Mr. Cushing is here, Chief. Hello, Milburn. Hello, John. Good to see you. Milvern, may I present Miss Slocum? Oh, how do you do? How do you do? This young lady will represent my bank in the annual competition for Queen of the Bankers Ball. Really, really? <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Our two banks usually fight it out in the finals. Oh, yes, it's a rivalry of long standing. Uh, Miss Slocum, why don't you just wait in the outer office, huh? Of course. Our usual wager, Milburn. What do you say we double it this year? Hmm? Oh, you're a hard man. Oh, what are you talking about? You've won the last two years. Well, all right. It's a bet. Now tell me, uh, who is your contestant going to be? Does it matter? <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> so long, Milburn. <laughs> oh, uh, Miss Slocum, why don't you just come in and say goodbye to Mr. Drysdale? You see, you won't meet her again before the contest. Yeah, that's right. And I want to wish you all the luck and the... <laughs> What's going on here? <laughs> this is how Miss Slocum will appear at the beauty contest tomorrow. <laughs> By the way, dear, what are those measurements again? 36, 23, 36. <laughs> Thank you. your mouth, Milburn. <laughs> Where'd you find her, the folie bergere? <laughs> Milburn, you know the rules. She works at my bank. In a pig's eye? No, in new accounts. <laughs> you won't get away with this, Cushing. Now, Milburn, you've always been such a good loser. You're not gonna change now. <laughs> <laughs> Howdy, Miss Jane. Oh, Jethro, hello. Hey, do you reckon Mr. Drysdale might be needing a double-knot spy? What? I mean, like, is anybody fixing to rob his bank or something? <laughs> you tricked me, Cushing! I'm afraid our host is losing his charm and affability. <laughs> Come along, 36, 23, 36. <laughs> Did you hear that? Mr. Drysdale, are they a couple of secret agents? A couple of crooks is what they are. She! Well, I bet if you followed them, you'd find that she doesn't work in his bank at all. Hot dog! That sounds like a job for a double knot. Double what? A double knot spy. I'll shadow him. Hey, wait for me! I'm not gonna shadow you! <laughs> Wise to give Jethro that assignment. What assignment? Spying on Miss Slocum. Oh, he's not spying. He's just going to find out if she really works in new accounts at the Merchant's Bank. He can do that by just walking by and looking in the front window. But Jethro won't stop at that. He's just seen a James Bond movie and he fancies himself another 007. Now, look, we've got bigger worries. Just in case that girl isn't a phony, we've got to come up with a beauty contestant who can beat her. Any ideas? No. How about you? Well, I'll do my best. Perhaps my glamour wig and a bikini. Start screening every female employee under the age of 30. Make that 35. <laughs> Uncle J, 
Jed, I'm doing my first job at Double Knot Spying. Oh? I'm saving Mr. Drysdale's bank. Well, good. It ain't a whole country, but it's a start. <laughs> I'll say. Uh, listen, Uncle Jed, uh, can I get me a spy car? What's a spy car? Oh, wait till you hear about that rascal. <laughs> it's got a top that flies off and a seat that if you set in it, it throws you from here to yonder. It drops oil on the road, so a fella following you will skid, and it shoots out smoke so he can't see. Sounds a heap like the truck. <laughs> no, it's what you call one of them imported foreign sports cars. And it is faster than a jackrabbit. And talk about extras, they is knives that comes out of the wheels and guns that shoots out the back. Pedro, it seems to me driving is dangerous enough without all that going on. <laughs> yeah, but old Double Knot Seven's got one. And I don't hardly see how I can get any first class spying done unless I got one too. Where'd old Double Knot Seven get hit? Q section, give it to him. Well, when you go to spying full time, you ask Q section to give you one. <laughs> and you finally got back home with my beans and my fat back, did you? Doggone it, Granny, I forgot again. You what? <laughs> well, gee whiz, Granny. It's just because I've been so busy trying to find my double knot supplies. I've been all over town. I can't find one single spy store. <laughs> well, there's plenty of little stores. Now you get to one. But, Granny, I gotta get my spy supplies. I've been to three places just trying to buy something simple like iron for my hat. <laughs> they looked at me like I was some kind of a nut. Instead of iron for your hat, you should have got some for the seat of your pants. Huh? Hand over, double knot. <laughs> Like I told you, the boys are might wrought up today. Well, I'm all might wrought up today. Now, you come home once more without my beans and my fat back, and you'll be doing your spying standing up. <laughs> Thanks to all chores you give me, Granny. Well, I'm going to give you one more. Go with your cousin Jethro and see that he fetches my vittles back home. Yes, ma'am. Come on, Jethro, let's go. You can't go with me, Ellie. I got spying to do. Well, I can spy just as good as you. You can't, neither. Can't, too. Can't. 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 Now, Jethro, you let Ellie go with you, like Granny said. <laughs> Gee whiz, Uncle Jed, I can't get no first-class spying done with her along. Old Double Knot Seven ain't got no girl cousin tagging after him. Old Double Knot Seven ain't got your granny. Now, run along. <laughs> I'm never gonna get my third number. I ain't got no spy car. I ain't got no iron hat. I ain't got no radio for my heel. All I got is a dad blasted girl cousin. <laughs> Like to see them in bathing suits, Chief? Are you kidding? <laughs> Get them out of here. All right, girls, now back to your desks. Thank you, one and all. Mr. Drysdale appreciates your loyalty and cooperation. Don't call us, we will call you. <laughs> She is wonderful. Send her in. Janet Trigo is here. Oh, great. Now we've got a chance. Why don't we have more employees who look like her? Well, frankly, Chief, Miss Trigo does not have it up here. Up here is not where we need it. <laughs> Come in, Miss Trigo. <laughs> What happened to you? Skiing accident. Oh, you poor dear. Well, Chief, there goes the contest. Nonsense. I don't give up so easily. We'll win yet. Get me something to knock off this cast. <laughs> Chief! Well, she can put out another one as soon as the contest is over. It means a race for you. <laughs> you can't be serious. Young bones men quickly. The contest isn't until tomorrow. But I just broke my leg yesterday. See? She got two whole days. <laughs> now, you take the afternoon off, go home, and let those bones knit. The doctor said three weeks. Come along, dear. That's the trouble, you women, today. Soft! 
So, you need a doctor for every little thing. <laughs> what if pioneer women had been like that, we wouldn't have any country. They fought Indians with broken legs. <laughs> Hope you get well soon, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Drysdale? Oh, hello, Jethro. I got a couple favors to ask you. Uh, first off, can I have an advance on my spying pay? And second, can I leave my cousin Ellie here for a spell? I can't get no double knotting done with her along. I'm just as much a double knot as you, Jethro. You ain't neither. Girls can't be double knots. Can't you? Can't. Can't. Please, Mr. Drysdale, keep her here. Ellie, I do need your help. You can take Miss Trigo's place and win... Do her job. Well, is it important secret stuff like Jethro's doing? Oh, it's very important and very secret. Well, then I'll stay. Hot dog. Now, can I have my advance? You want? Money. To fix up my spy car and stuff. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. And thank you. Oh. Look out, Miss Dane. I'm on my fighting, loving, hat-skimming, bank-saving way. <laughs> gee, gee, shouldn't we stop, Jethro? Be Never done. mind him. Now, I want you to get a bathing suit for our beautiful new employee here. Boy, Ellie Mae? That's right. She's going to fill in for the injured Miss Trigo. Chief, you are just thinking of that beauty contest tomorrow. I am thinking of that poor pain-racked girl. Do you expect her to sit at her desk with a broken leg? <laughs> Have you no pity, no compassion? But just a moment, a No arguments. Miss Trigo has been through a terrible ordeal. She faces weeks of suffering while those shattered bones knit. She must have time to convalesce. All right, Chief. Tell her she's got tomorrow off. <laughs> This strange young man has been spying on you? Yes. You know, my desk and new accounts is near the front window. Yeah. Well, I first noticed him when he drove up on a funny looking old truck. He got off and limped to the window and peered at me. He limps? Like this. And he wears a black hat pulled low over his eyes. He stared at me through the window like this. <gasps> there he is! Thought you could give me the slip, huh? I shadowed you. Just a moment, young man. Who are you? Let's just say I'm double knot 10. Puts me a knot up on 07. <laughs> now then, miss. Oh, gone. There goes my secret radio again. <laughs> Every time I step down on it, the blasted thing commences playing. <laughs> hey, now, hold on there, mister. Don't try nothing unless you want to get this iron hat skimmed at you. <laughs> when I say iron, I mean iron. So watch yourself. I remember this kid. He was in Drysdale's office at the Commerce Bank. Yes, I recall seeing him as we left. I bet Drysdale sent him over here to see if you were really working here. What if he finds out I just started this morning? <sighs> Shh. He's coming around. <laughs> what happened? Did you shoot me with a tranquilizer gun? Or spray me with nerve gas or something? It was an iron hat that knocked you out. Doggone, you got in the first lick. <laughs> that don't stop a smart double knot like me. <laughs> find a different place to hide my secret radio. Where's my hat? This letter must have fallen. J.D. Clampett? That's Drysdale's star depositor. What is your connection with him? Well, he's my uncle. Oh, no. If there's any secret blabbing to be done around here, she's gonna do it. Me? What makes you think so? Well, how far? That's what always happens when a double knot spy tangles with a pretty girl. A one kiss and she spills the beans. Watch this. <laughs> J.D. Clampett is my uncle. We have pretty near $50 million in Mr. Drysdale's bank. My cousin Ellie May commenced working there today. Well, that's very interesting. What else can you tell us? You keep kissing, I'll think of something. <laughs> 
Wonderful, wonderful. We're a sense to win. Thank you, Ellie. Is this all I get to do? Heck far. I thought I was gonna get to do important secret stuff, like Jethro's doing. Oh, that comes now. You go and put on Miss Hathaway's trench coat, that old hat out there, a pair of glasses, and we're going to pay a little visit to Mr. Cushing of the Merchant's Bank. <laughs> Sir. Chief, I object most strenuously to the methods you're employing. Oh, really? And how do you feel about the secretary I'm employing? I think I should keep my big mouth shut. Good girl. <laughs> Careful getting out of that ejector seat. What ejector seat? The one you're sitting on. <laughs> Every spy car's got one of them. That's all shouting, my boy. Look what I got, Uncle Jed. Ain't she a beauty? <laughs> she is for a fact. Yes, sir. That's what you call a first-class double-knot spy car. <laughs> well, I thought you were talking about a young lady here. Howdy, ma'am. I'm Jed Clampett. Mabel Slocum. You one of them uh, double-knot spies? No. Uh, they number girl spies different. Uh, she's what you call a 36, 23, 36. Actually, I'm in new accounts at the Merchants Bank. I'd like to talk to you about using our facilities as a repository for some of your enormous reserves. Well, I'd be glad to talk to you about that. Uh, uh, whatever it means. Uh, not now, 36. I got to show Uncle Jed some of my spy car stuff. Well, uh, why don't you step inside and make yourself comfortable, and I'll join you directly. Thank you. Not at all. Well, boy, show me what you got. Well, first off... <laughs> this here's my smoke screen maker. <laughs> this here's my oil slick spreader. <laughs> Come look at this. Suppose they some rascals chasing me. And they goes to shooting at me. And I give him this. Kind of dangerous, ain't it, boy? Spying's a dangerous business. That's a come a pay so good. Oh, well, Mr. Drysdale, give me twenty dollars. What's this contraption here? Suppose they go to shooting at you from all directions. This here is my bulletproof shield. Watch this. How about that? That's <laughs> handy. But uh, how do you see to drive? Jethro? What do you see from in there? That's one of the bugs I ain't worked out yet. <laughs> What's that handle there? Oh, that there releases the ejector seat. What's an ejector seat? Well, suppose somebody's riding with you that you want to get shut up. You just yank on that, rascal. Next thing you know, he's 50 feet in the air. <laughs> You finally got back home with my beans and my fat back, did you? <laughs> well, I hope you got plenty. I see you fetch company home for supper. I'll go right now, Granny. You mean you forgot again? I've been so busy getting kissed and rigging all this special stuff on my spy car that I... Where's Ellie Mae? Did you forget her, too? I'll fetch her home with the beans and fat back. <laughs> I'm going with you this time. You can't be trusted. Okay, Granny, but be careful. I'll hang on to this handle. My dog is boy, you sure got the bugs worked out of that thing. <laughs> Time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heaping helping of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. 
All come back now. Here. This has been a Filmways presentation.